okay to give God a hand clap of praise in God's house. You might as well go ahead and get your hands loose and your blood flowing because the Holy Ghost has already been here this morning. Y'all not ready. Well, Remnant Church, good morning. How many people's excited about being in God's house? Our youth band at night is going to lead us into worship. But I want to ask you a question. Why do you worship? What is the purpose in worship? The word worship is actually mean what something's worth to you. Let me help somebody real quick. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And all of us fell short of God's glory. That our righteousness is as filthy rags. So when you are not able to enter into the presence of the Lord, when you're not able to have eternal life on your own, God said, I got a plan. And his name is Jesus. And Jesus came down 2,020 years ago and hung on a cross and he had you on his mind. So why is that important? Because that's good news. Because he literally took your place. So the blood that you were supposed to shed for your own sin, God said, I'm going to step in Donnie Parker's place and I'm going to take his place. Why? Because I love him that much. I don't know if you're ready to encounter what God's got for you this morning, but if you can physically stand on your feet and lift your hands, we're going to welcome his presence into this place. Father God, in the powerful, mighty name of Jesus, not because we are good enough, but because you are so good, we want to welcome your presence into this house. We want to thank you for Calvary. Thank you for your love that's shed for us. Thank you for never giving up on me, God. Thank you for your love not running out. And God, right now, God, we want to invite your presence into Remedy Church. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that chains are broken today. I pray in the name of Jesus that your name is lifted on high. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would wreck us with glory, Lord. That today be given your name glory. And God, we're just going to magnify and give your name glory in the mighty name of Jesus.
Somebody just reverence his presence.
you want it, just ask. Fill me up, Dad. Until I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Jesus, fill me up. something to be taken lightly many times we come in church I'm not speaking church specific but many times we come to church and the Holy Ghost begins to move and because we don't know how to respond to his presence the Bible says grieve not the Holy Ghost The Holy Ghost desires to fill you to the place of overflow. Not because we deserve anything, but because he wants to pour his love out on you. The Holy Ghost is, is the third part of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes to bring comfort to bring rest and to bring strength. Jesus said, behold, I got to go because so I can send forth the comforter. Ain't nothing like the Holy Ghost coming into your bedroom at two, three o'clock in the morning when you've been up all night stressing your mind out, not knowing what to do. Ain't nothing like the Holy Ghost when you need a word of wisdom and God just whispered something in your ear. to have complete 
complete and total liberty in this house. I could care less if I get up here and preach something or not. saying I won't stop until I see it. I won't stop that if I don't feel it. I'm not going to stop until I get totally full of whatever it is that you want from me. Slap their hands, give them a high five, tell them it's good to see you in God's house. Tell them you love them. Tell them you missed them all week long.
if you hadn't felt the wind of the Holy Ghost sweep up in this room, I want to talk to you after service. There's something wrong with you. Is that okay to say? If it ain't, I can talk to the pastor. He's an Israel. <laughs> um, first and foremost, I want to honor the man of God, the pastor of the house. He's not here. But I want you to show your appreciation by letting him know that you love him when he watches this on screen. <laughs> We want to, I want to do something. We want to welcome our online guests and say hello. It's good to have you here this morning. Uh, I pray that the presence that's in this room is found its way in your living room. And uh, it's good to be in God's house. Um, the pastor gave me this opportunity. And I take every opportunity very uh, sacred, and I appreciate the opportunity. So I asked to do these announcements because I want to do it. Um, I, didn't, I didn't want the video thing. I wanted to try it, and I wanted to give it a shot so if I fumble or mess up I want you to just pray for me and uh, don't hold me don't hold me uh, accountable to this because everybody in here is not Tar Heel fans so <laughs> I say that because ain't nobody perfect but you know okay never mind <laughs> amen amen um, love stories message series we're starting a, a series about love stories here um, and it's starting on February 9th. That's a Sunday morning service. We're starting there. And the invite cards is out there in the front when you come in. Get some and invite somebody. Invite somebody to the presence of the Lord. But what's the purpose of the invite cards? Because it makes it easy. My Lord, we're making it so easy that you don't really even have to strike up a conversation. All you have to do is just say, hey, I go to Remedy Church here. And, you know, and then conversation will come. It makes it just easy. So uh, how many people is going to get an invite card? Don't lie, you okay, because God sees you. Okay, all right. Um, water baptisms. We are going to have water baptism here in the sanctuary on February 16th. Um, there's a phone number. Is there a phone number way to put it up there? I got it here unless I, I don't. Okay, there's a phone number that we'll get up there. I want you to text baptism to the number 704-706-2877. If you are interested in getting baptized, or, and, and you don't have that number, I want you to see me after service. I got it right here so I can pass on the information. Um, Catalyst Group. It's a new thing that we're going to start. Catalyst Group for new believers. For people who's came to know Christ and, or, or has ran away from the Lord and came back and or just, just want to do it. It's a, it's a good tool. It begins in February. Any uh, more information, I want you to speak with Pastor Cody when he gets back. Uh, wildfire. Night. How many people was here for the first wildfire service? Yes. I felt like it was a good service. Amen. Amen. Wildfire service is going to be on February 12th. It's not going to be on the 5th. I know we said the first Wednesday, but there is prayer conference going on, I believe, at uh, West Day, Canapolis Church of God. Uh, I believe we're, invi we're inviting everybody to do that. Is that what? Okay. Invite. Uh, so February 5th, uh, we're going to be having church there. The 5th, 6th, and 7th. Okay, so go ahead and clear your calendars unless there's some uh, previous ob ob obligation because there's nothing like getting in the presence of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Amen. Uh, adult midweek classes. You asked for it. Series. There's a box down there. It continues. If you want to know something biblically or you just got a question and you want to throw it out there, put it in the box. Uh, Pastor Cody's going to get that, pray over it, and get some answers, and there's going to be open discussion. Um, I want to ask, is there any first-time guests here? If you could, I want to welcome you. Remedy Church, will you help welcome our first time guest? Amen. There is a, there's information up there. There's a, the same phone number. Uh, you can send a quick text or whatever. We just want to follow up with you just to let you know that we're here for you and we love you. Let you know what's going on in this local church and uh, how we can be of any kind of assistance to you. So, that was pretty good. Did I do okay? Bless the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Wow, that's the Holy Ghost. That's what it is, you know. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, we want to move in the portion. Of, uh, do I have ushers that's ready and available to come up here? Because we're going to worship. Worship and offering. Absolutely. Uh, because offering, giving is an act of, of worship. You know, it's not. The Bible says, the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. If you're going to give grudgingly, and you're like, I don't want to get it, then don't give. Leave it in your pocket. That just messed somebody's religious mind up real quick. We don't want your money. We want you to be blessed. Is that, 
Is that okay? That's biblical. That's all right. I'm talking the Bible up here. I'm not just, you know. Now, if you go, now, if somebody tells Pastor, Alex is up here saying, we don't want your money. Y'all need to take, don't take it out of context of what I'm saying. Uh, but we love you. I, I know I know for a fact this, that you cannot outgive God. Your tithe, and when you, when you pay your tithes, that is required of God. That's the only place in the Bible. He says, prove me. I will show you what I will do. I will open up. Maybe that's too much for you. They ready. Are you ready to worship and give to me? Amen. Let's, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, as we come before you, I pray in the name of Jesus that every gift that is given from your children would be expanded, Lord, and increased to the point of a hundredfold. God, you care about your people, you care about your children, and you care about meeting needs. So, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your hand of blessing would be upon this offering and that you would touch your people, touch the, touch the gift and the giver in the mighty name of Jesus. If you ever send me, I'll say what you want me to say. Whatever you want me to say, I'll say. So he began to shift my message, Paul, when uh, about a week and a half ago. And I said, okay, Dad, this is what we're doing, okay. And um, so the title of my lesson, the sermon this morning, is Breaking the Silence. Breaking the Silence. Whew. 
Thank you, Ms. Maddie. Thank you, Mr. Robert. Breaking the silence. I want to do something this morning. Excuse me. The Lord wants to do something. I want to break the paradigm that says that you have to have a microphone or a platform or a stage to be used by God. I need, I need to kill that, that mindset real quick. Let me tell you something about this microphone. This microphone has power coming through it. And God will never give you something that he doesn't prepare you for. A lot of people say, well, I want his anointing or I want her anointing. You don't know what they have to went through to get that. The olive gets squeezed and gets pressed and it's hard and it's difficult. Does that make sense? So I want to kill somebody's mindset that says you have to have a microphone or you have to have a stage or you have to sing the best or play the best. Or do no, 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 no. See, God created everybody individually unique and fearfully and wonderfully made so that in your gifting and your calling, what he's called you to do, you will excel when you're doing what you're supposed to do, not what somebody else says about you. All you have to do is be in a right relationship with Jesus and love him and just follow after him. And he will begin to unfold things in your life that you didn't even know was there. There's things hidden in your life, son, that you just don't even realize. And once your life lines up and you begin to walk the path that God has for you, he'll begin to unveil things when it's time in order for you to step into your destiny. That was for somebody. All right. So before the end of this service, before the end of this service, we're going to break the silence. I, I got a few that's ready. I don't know if everybody's ready. But if y'all ain't ready to break it, bless God, I'm going to break it this morning. Yeah. Acts chapter 7, verse 17 and 18. It's going to be on the screen. If y'all ready for the word, say aye. Aye. All right. As the time drew near when God would fulfill his promise to Abraham, the number of our people in Egypt greatly increased. Verse 18. But then, everybody say, but then, Amen. a new king came to the throne of Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph. Now I want to go to, I want to shift, keep that in your, in, in your notes. I want to shift to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I want to talk to you for a few moments about breaking the silence. When this came to me, I was literally in a place of prayer. I was spending time with the Lord and, I, and the Holy Ghost was there and it was just me and him. You know, I desire intimacy from my father. I don't know about you and how your relationship is with Jesus, but I've got to have intimacy. I prayed, I said, God, let the foundation of my ministry be founded on intimacy. Because I love him and I know he loves me and I, and I cherish the moments we get to spend together. So I mean, I, I'm praying, I'm going through my house and the Holy Spirit is there. And the Holy Spirit spoke this to me. He said, breaking the silence. Now, at first, I didn't know what he, what he was meaning. I knew I heard from the Lord and I wasn't sure what he was saying. I knew what he said, but I didn't know the meaning behind what he was saying. And then he began to share with me, because I didn't understand, he began to share with me that there is a spirit of Jezebel that has been active in trying to silence the word of God. It is found throughout this nation. It is found throughout every neighborhood. It is found throughout this generation in this world. There is a spirit of Jezebel that is trying to literally silence the voice of God. But how many people know that you cannot silence the word of God? Let me come down here for just a minute. You cannot silence the word of God. You can be silent, but the word of God will still speak. If you won't speak, God will raise up somebody else who will. So we need to be a people who break the silence. You can't be silent anymore. He's raising up a remnant of people. Now listen, listen, this is going to kill somebody. It's not age specific. People think, okay, the, the new generation and these kids are on fire for God. But listen, it's not age specific. It's a remnant of people who said, I will not be silent when everybody else tells me to shut up. I will stand when everybody else sits. God is raising up a remnant of people who will stand and break the silence. Well, why is that important? 
Let me explain. I want you to go to 2 Peter. It's going to be on the screen. I got all my, Savannah's doing a phenomenal job back there. 2 Peter, chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. It says, most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, somebody say last days, scoffers will come mocking, mocking the truth and following their own desires. Go to verse 4. They will say, what happened? Michael, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? You ever heard that? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world first created. What, let me break this down in case you missed it. In the last days, there's going to be people that rise up and talk junk about the gospel. And say, well, I've heard all my life that Jesus was coming back. Where's he at? I've literally heard people say that. Maybe that's too much for you. Hold on, I'm going somewhere. Go to verse 8, sweetheart. But you must not forget this one thing. Dear friends, a day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. We are literally in the last days, okay? We are literally living in the last days that at any moment the, the Son of God is going to part the eastern sky. He's going to step down from glory and he's going to call up his children. The Bible says in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, I didn't even plan on saying this. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, it will be gone, vanished. And you think that there's hell on earth now? You just wait. Now I pray, my prayer is that nobody in here is left behind. But there is coming a day when there's something that's called the rapture is going to take place and Jesus Christ is coming back for his children and the Bible says that Jesus himself doesn't know the, doesn't know the hour or day only the father and he's sitting there waiting and the only thing that we can go of is the signs that God left us behind through the word of God in Matthew chapter 24 and show us signs about what it's going to look like when days are coming short another indication is that Satan is going crazy He's doing everything he physically can to try to hinder what God's going to do. He's a prideful little snake. He thinks that he's going to win. How many people's read the book? Right, let me walk around this thing real quick. Hold on. What you doing? I, I, it's a revelation because the book says we win. The book says he's defeated. The book says that he's going to be cast into a lake of fire. And it's not for, and it, and it, listen, listen, listen. God's desire is not meant for no man to perish. But for all men to come to repentance. Well, do you have any idea how bad they are? Who are you judging? How bad are you? How bad were you before the Lord cleaned you up and found you? We are not to judge anybody, church. Listen, we're not to point fingers and say shame and blame and all this condemnation. That's not what Jesus did. When Jesus was walking the earth, there was a prostitute that had demons inside of her. And he stood with everybody else and was justified for her to die, Jesse. And he said, where is your accusers? And the only one that could bring judgment, judgment was standing there. And he said, I choose to give you grace. That's a shouting moment for somebody because somebody in here could have, been could have been justified and sent to hell. But God says, oh, no, I love them that much. And my sacrifice was too great for me to let them go. Is everybody with me so far? You may say this. You may say this. I'm a Christian, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what people are going to say, what they're going to think about me. I, I'm 38 years old. Bless the Lord, I'm looking for 40. I'm 38 years old. I understand the pressures in being young and, and stepping out and, and proclaiming the name of Jesus to people that because when you're teenagers and young, it, it's something about an image that you try to maintain. The older you get, the less that matters. I really could care less what you think about me and, and, and my relationship, I really don't care. I really don't. I'm in love with Jesus. He loves me, I love him, and I'm gonna show it by my actions. I'm not just coming to church to come to church. I'm coming to church because I just, I don't know about you, but I look forward to coming to God's house. Why? 
Because the Bible says when two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. I may be having a bad day. I may come for the Lord. You may come for the Lord. And we just invited God's presence. And whatever I'm battling with, the spirit of the Lord is in here. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. <laughs> That's why it's so important that you come to church already full of the Holy Ghost when you get here. That's why you... Help me, Holy. I don't know why I'm going down this path, Sister James, but I need to go. You need to get up in the morning and go ahead and spend some time with Jesus before you get to God's house. Why? Because you're preparing an atmosphere for the fire of God to fall. And you may have somebody in the house that comes in busted and disgusted and bound up with chains of oppression and depression and addictions. And because you spent time with the Father, you, go, you went ahead and you brought the, the Spirit in when you got here. So that when he's here, he's already here and he's entertained. And the person who came in bound cannot be bound anymore because the Spirit of the Lord is here. Amen. First Timothy one chapter one first excuse me. Rewind. First Timothy chapter one verse seven. I did not have this. It's okay, sweetheart. For God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I, I need you to see something. Fear is not something that is physical. Fear is something that is spiritual. He did not give you a spirit of fear. Has anybody ever had a spirit of fear come at you? I don't care how long you walk with the Lord. You could walk down a dark alley and you could feel a spirit of fear come against you and come around you. But bless God, God didn't give me a spirit of fear. I can look up and say, in the name of Jesus, get thee behind me, Satan. Go ahead and pack your bags and go back to where you came from. For God, well, what are you doing? I quote the scripture when the enemy comes at me because that's what my father did. For God did not give me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Take your stuff and go back to hell where you came from. And I just begin to worship Jesus. Well, don't you care what people say? No! Am I too loud? I'm breaking the silence. I need to explain something. You are a child. You are a child of God. And you have victory over the enemy. I need to say it again. You're a child of the king. You're a son. You're a daughter of the king. And you have total victory over the enemy. Nothing that he throws your way is going to be able to work. Why? Because when Jesus died on the cross and he went to the grave, his body stayed his body stayed there, but his spirit did not. He went down to hell, and he said, oh, I need them keys real quick. I took back the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Oh, victory. oh, grave, where is your sting? Death, where is it? I, I got the victory. So when you are, when you are a child of God, that's, whoo, that same spirit now lives in you. That's encouraging to somebody. Because somebody came in here feeling defeated. Right? <laughs> John 8, 44. For the devil is a liar and the father of all lies. You quit, you quit believing the lies that the enemy's telling you that you're defeated, that your life is hopeless, that it's pointless and it's worthless. No, 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 no. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm a child of the living God. He loves me inside, outside, and he, I'm the apple of his heart. Has it, it, does everybody have a job? Has everybody ever had a job where you have what they call benefits yeah. or insurance? Now, when you're younger, all you care about is paper. How much money they pay. <laughs> that ain't enough for me. But when you get a little older, it's not necessarily about how much they're giving you. It's about the insurance because you need to be make, make sure you're taken care of. And with a wife and six kids, I need to make sure that the insurance of my job covers them. Like a generational blessing. Okay, daddy. We can do it. We can do it. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. Do I got completely? Fan, you are on point, sweetheart. Thank you, Jeremy. Now, I want you to listen because I'm going to read it how you read it. 
But in the coming day, a lot of times we don't quote this part of the verse, okay? It says, no weapon turned against you will succeed. And you stop. I, I'm not blaming, but listen. How many people say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper? Glory, whoo, throw your head back, your weed come out and everything, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now check it out. And it says, you will silence every voice right. raised up against you. Amen. Who? It's not talking about you, it's talking about him. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. And I love this part. It says, I, the Lord, have spoken. Come on now. Well, why is that so important? Because when God speaks, something happens. You don't believe me? In the beginning, God said, let there be light. Boom! And there was light. These are the benefits that are enjoyed by God's children. So when it says no weapon formed against you will prosper, that's right. But it, see, it's, it's not your battle. You will silence every voice raised up against you. Shut your mouth, Satan. The benefits belong to you. <laughs> and there's not like a 90-day holding period. There's not a 90-day holding period that you got to wait on, on the benefits to know. When you accept God as your Savior and you invite him into your life, that is a benefit that you can take to the grave, baby. And when you go to the grave, the next breath that you take is going to be in glory. Yes. Come on now. Amen. My Jesus. Luke 10, 19, it says, I've given you all power and authority over the enemy that nothing in any way shall harm you. I, get, I, I, Jesus, giving you all power and authority. And authority. You want me to show you what authority is? Aaliyah, stand up. Sit down. Hold on. Now, nah, that's my daughter. Chill out. <laughs> Doesn't know this is my baby. I tell her what to do, and she listens. Authority. Not that I rang over her, but it's an authoritative speech. So when something comes against you, you have the authority to speak it and say, leave me alone. Right. And I, I'm gonna help somebody, but you have to shift your direction. You don't stay where the enemy tries to talk to you. You shift your direction. Well, well what am I supposed to do? Just go ahead and start praising the Lord. That's gonna get on Satan's nerve more than anything else you can understand. Because he was up there in heaven and he understood the power of worship and praise. Some of you don't understand the power of your worship. So when you come in here dead and frozen chosen, you don't understand why you don't have breakthrough in your life. It's because you don't have the understanding that power comes from your mouth. There is power of life and death in the tongue and you can naturally speak things into existence. I'm not talking about prosperity preaching. Hold on. Bless God, give me a million dollars. No. No. Isaiah 59, 19, it says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit will lift up a standard against him. We have the victory in Christ. We have the victory in Christ, church. Child of God, son of God, daughter of God, we have the victory in Christ. Go back to Acts chapter 7, verse 17 and 18. I want to go back and it says this. It says, as the time drew near, as the time drew near when God would fulfill his promise, I want to remind you of 2 Peter, what we talked about, that we're living in the last days. The time is coming, church, when the last days is going to be over and the Bible is going to be fulfilled and everything is said and prophesied. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain forever. The word of God is alive. It is living. It is breathing. Yes. You don't believe me? Let me give you a quick story and I'm going to move on. I was struggling in my bedroom one night. Struggling. I forgot my wife. She was gone somewhere. But it's hard. It's hard to struggle and you feel alone. But what God was doing was stretching me and growing me. And there's growing pains and it don't feel good. And I was in my room one night and I was struggling. I was, I was literally, felt like I was having a mental breakdown. And I read the Bible front to back, okay? Javen comes in. My little pastor, he comes in and he had a toy snake on it in his hand. And he's like, look, Dad, look what I got. Now, I don't do the real thing, okay? <laughs> Not with me, no. 
but he had a rubber snake. He's like, look what I got, Dad, look what I got. He said, do you know what you do with it? So I'm thinking that he's about to be like prophetic, you know? I'm like, you know, stomp on the head of, uh, of the serpent, you know, and strike you. I thought that. He said, no, Dad, you cut his head. And the Holy Spirit brought this to my attention. The Word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword. Yeah. Come on. Well, why is that important, church? Because that is the only offensive weapon that the Lord gave you to fight your battles. <coughs> Wasn't it unique how they lined up the service with the first three songs about worship and how much power it is? This is how I fight my battles. I'm going to raise a hallelujah in the midst of the storm. A defender. I love it because it said he goes before me. And he comes back with the head of my enemy and he calls it my victory. That's going to hit somebody later on through the week. But it's coming time for God to fulfill his promise. Why? Okay. And it says... The number of our people in Egypt greatly increased. They were growing. They were living in blessing. This is a dangerous place to be in. Not that I'm against blessing because I love the blessing. But if you stay in the blessing and you forget who's blessing you, then it's not, it's not feasible, okay? Why? Verse 18. Verse 18. It says this. It says, but then a new king came, came to the throne of Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph. Why did they not know anything about Joseph? <coughs> Let me tell you why. Because they quit talking. There was no Facebook back then. There was no social media. There was word of mouth. And they talked about the goodness of God and they, and they, and they testified and they said this is that God is good. And, and what they did was they talked. But at some point, Anthony, they got to a point where they said, and it was in the middle of their blessing. Look, it says when, when, when it came time for God to fulfill his promise, they grew in numbers. Okay, and then a new king came on the throne, didn't know what was going on, and they quit talking. <coughs> Don't get caught up in the blessing and forget that Jesus and what he's done for you. He wants to give you an abundant life, yes. But my abundant life it's pointless if I forget the mission that God's given me to do. Right. I can make all the money in the world. I can have the finest and nicest things. I can have the flyest gear. I can have 20 inch rims on my car and I can have all this stuff. But if I forget about my mission, then it's all gone to waste. What does it gain to profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul in the end? I don't know about you, but I not only want to take myself to heaven, my family, and I want all of you that's why I do what I do. That's why I am the way that I am. Not because I'm trying to gain a, a, a crown or, or a throne or any kind of publicity, or I don't care nothing about that. I want to know that when I get to heaven that my life was spent, poured out, and given sacrifice unto God. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. I, I'm, I'm about to land this plane. Chicken's still good at KFC. It's all right. <laughs> Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, it says, Therefore, this is, Jesus had died, he was resurrected, and he was getting ready to leave his disciples. And these were instructions that he was giving them. Because Jesus was no longer going to be here in the physical. He, had to, he was going to go sing his Holy Spirit. He said, Therefore, I need you to go. Right. This is not going. Going is not coming to church, sitting on a pew or a chair or whatever we got, receiving a word of knowledge and going out there and just keeping it to yourself. Because then you get spiritually obese. Going is literally putting the word into action and doing what thus says the Lord. Going into all the nations, baptizing them in the Holy Ghost. Baptizing them in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So what are you talking about, Alex? When I'm on my job, I proclaim the good news. I don't stand on chairs and tell everybody they're going to hell. I don't do none of that. I show the love of Jesus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if God prompts me to do something, that's what I do. <clears throat> I've had people at my job apologize to me for taking the Lord's name in vain and, and, and being very vulgar with me. I don't ask them to do that. Yeah. 
We have to be walking billboards for Jesus. Right, right, right. Well, why is that important? So the people that don't know Jesus can see. We are, we are the salt of the earth. We're the salt of the earth. Jesus said we're the salt. Salt has flavor. Anybody ever had rice with no salt? Ugh. <laughs> what is that? It's like eating cardboard and just gross, right? You know what I'm saying? But you put a little salt on it. But I, I like pizza with salt. It brings some flavor out. It's not just, it's not just Jesus. It's Jesus with some flavor. Okay. Okay. We are that. Be careful how you live your life in front of this lost and dying world because the enemy will exploit you. Are you perfect? No, I didn't say that, but don't let your good be spoken evil of. Be careful what you listen to on the radio. Be careful what you watch on TV because surely the things that go inside of here will eventually come out here. And if it don't come out here, it's going to do some damage right here. We're the salt. We are God's flavor. So that people can see and want what you have. If you're a Christian and nobody wants what you have, you need to check your salt. The Bible says that we're the light of the world. I brought a flashlight. That's pretty bright. A light is to pierce through darkness. Darkness flees at the very presence of light. Anybody ever been to Limbo Cabbage? They take you in a hole and you... Yeah, I'll take you in a hole, and they cut out all the lights. Then they're like, put your hand in front of your face, see if you can see it. You can't see nothing. But if you was to have just a little light right here, it would pierce through the darkness, and everybody else could see the light. We are this light. Who in the world will go into the middle of the woods and put a flashlight, and be like, yeah, I see where we're going, and go like this. Now look, the light is still on, but you can't see it. We are not to hide our light. No matter the cost, no matter what may happen, no matter the ridicule, Jesus said they're going to persecute you. We are not in a nation right now that really persecutes us like other nations. Does that make sense? But what if it comes this way? Well, it got quiet. I got somebody in the middle. But what if it comes this way? <coughs> Is it going to be worth it? <coughs> it will be worth every single minute. Come on now. When I die in this old body, in the very presence I come into is the presence of the king. Every bit of stuff that I went through is going to be worth it. You're going to literally look at this world and you're going to say, wow, that's all there was to it? This world is really insignificant. Let me help somebody real quick. If I had a timeline and I went from this side to this side and I say put eternity on, you could not do it. Our time frame it starts when, we, when, we, when, we're, when we're born until we die. And in the middle, we're supposed to live like Jesus. And God does not want to leave you empty-handed. Come play for me, sweetheart. When Jesus called his disciples before he sent them, there was a couple different times in the Bible, I believe Mark chapter 6 and Luke chapter 21, don't quote me on that. I, I got, I'll tell you. But there was a couple times in the Bible where Jesus sent disciples out to proclaim the good news. Yeah. He, he had been with them. He had showed them the way. But now, before he left, he didn't want to leave them empty-handed. I, I want you to go do what I've been telling you to do. <laughs> but he did not leave them with just, now go. The Bible says that he gave them the power to heal the sick and cast out evil spirits. He breathed on them and 
said, receive the Holy Ghost. This power is in this room. This power is literally in this room. Go to John chapter 20 for me. John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22, and I'm about to close. Again, again he said, peace be with you. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is the God of peace. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. But why is that so important? The Holy Spirit can do things that you cannot. says if any man is to be drawn unto the Father, he has to be drawn by the Spirit. Right. And God does not want to leave you empty handed today. I felt like my message and my proclamation here this morning was to say it's time to break the silence. We no longer should be a quiet body of believers. We've got to be active in our community, active in our jobs, active in our families. We have literally got to stop hiding the light and hiding the salt and putting it on the shelf. Yeah, well, I'm just going to go get salty and then I'm going to go home and I'm just going to keep it for myself. We have literally have got to be a funnel with an opening at the bottom. As God pours in, we pour out. Right. Jesus said, go. Go. It's time to break the silence. If you in your life, I'm closing this. If you in your life want to break the silence and you want to be a witness of who Jesus is. I don't care how long you've been serving God. I don't care if you're brand new. You've been serving God for 45 years. It's time, church, to break the silence. If you're here under the sound of my voice and you don't know what I'm talking about because it doesn't resign inside, it doesn't resound inside of your spirit because you haven't fully committed your life unto Christ, I want to tell you that the Father is here and the Father loves you and he died just for you. He died just for you. That was the only way to get you into heaven was for you to be, for Jesus to die in your place. Being a Christian is not as hard as the enemy makes it out. As a Christian, you have struggles just like everybody else, but you have a comforter that's there. And when you make up your mind, I'm going to live for Jesus. There's, listen, I, I need to say that again. I need to hit somebody. When you make up your mind and you get determined, I'm going to live this thing. There's no devil in hell that can stop you. It's when you turn over the gift back and say, man, this is too hard for me.
There is power that's going to be imparted to you today. Today. I'm going to wait a moment and I'm going to ask, is there anybody else? Thank you. 